Good morning, everybody. It's really good to see you here. Well, well done for making it to, into church. And for those of you online, it's good to be with you too. Um, you are all incredibly welcome, uh, whether you are gathered here in the building or watching online. Um, we are starting our first service um, on the first Sunday of Advent, which is really exciting. Um, and my kids are getting very excited because those Advent calendars are starting to, to be opened. But it's building up, and we are going to be thinking more about that today. Um, and also, we're going to have our second sermon in our environmental series, preaching series, which Jill will be sharing with us later on. So in a few minutes, we're going to start our time of worship together. Our Bible reading uh, will be shared by Evelyn and Jill will be sharing our prayers as well as our sermon this morning. I will be leading us in part of our service and Reverend Marg will be leading us in communion in a bit. And so we all come to this service, probably a little bit chilly, uh, but with different needs this morning. So please do feel free to move around if you need to. Um, the toilets are at the back with baby changing facilities as well. And this is going to be a communion service where we can gather and share in that incredible meal. So for those in church, Reverend Marg will share with us uh, in a bit what we're going to do and how we're going to take part in that meal. And for those online, that will be your time to gather bread and fruit juice or wine um, so that you can share in unity with us at that time. All of the service will be on the screens this morning and you are invited to join in with all of the words in bold print. So let's now pause for a moment before we begin our time of worship. We gather together during Advent to wait for the coming Messiah. We look up to the darkness of the heavens and we see the first faint glimmer of the sunrise creeping over the horizon. The day is not yet upon us, but its dawning is announced. And today we light the first candle of Advent. And so I'm going to invite Kay to come up and light that for us. This candle represents hope. We put our hope in the one to come, the promised one who comes from God to bring good news of salvation. We hope in the one who will lead us to walk in the light of the Lord. We hope he will not let us live in dark valleys, but on the high mountain of God, so we light this candle in hope. On this day, we remember to hopefully look for the coming of Christ. The Lord be with you. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. And so please stand if you are able for our first hymn, Tell Out My Soul. Let's stand. <laughs>
please be seated for our time of confession when we consider all those things this week where our relationships with each other and with God have been tested through things that we have done. A voice cries out in the wilderness, make straight the way of the Lord. So let us listen and turn to the Lord in penitence and faith. Lord Jesus, you came to gather the nations into the peace of your kingdom. Lord, have mercy. You come in word and sacrament to strengthen us in holiness. Christ, have mercy. You will come in glory with salvation for your people. Lord, have mercy. Please stand as we sing the Kyrie. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated as evening brings us our Bible reading. reading today is Psalm 8. O Lord, our Sovereign, how majestic is your name in all the earth. You have set your glory above the heavens. Out of the mouths of babes and infants, you have founded a bulwark because of your foes to silence the enemy and the avenger. When I look at your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars that you have established. What are human beings that you are mindful of them, mortals that you care for them? Yet you have made them a little lower than God and crowned them with glory and honour. You have given them dominion over the works of your hands. You have put all things under their feet, all sheep and oxen, and also the beasts of the field, the birds of the air and the fish of the sea, whatever passes along the paths of the seas. O Lord, our Sovereign, how majestic is your name in all the earth. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. May I speak in the name of God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. 
Today, as John said, we're continuing our series on the environment. And this, we are, this week, we are looking at the particular vocation that we as humans, as beings made in the image of God, have. But today, as John said, we're also celebrating Advent Sunday. And I ought to note as well that St. Nicholas Day is in three days' time. So today we have many things to think about. When Jackie spoke last week, she encouraged us to think about what we should be doing to look after this wonderful planet that God has made. In the reading we heard last week, God said to humankind, be fruitful and multiply and have dominion over all living things. The reading continued that God had given us the seeds and the fruit of the trees for food. In the reading you just heard, the psalmist said, what are human beings that you are mindful of them? Mortals that you care for them? He continues, yet you have made them a little lower than God and crowned them with glory and honor and then repeats from the Genesis reading, you have given them dominion over the works of your hand. You have put all things under, your, under their feet. So I wonder what this means to you. There is one way of interpreting it, I have to say which I don't agree with, which is that nature has no reason for existence except to serve man. I believe that God gave the human race dominion over his creation, not only be to be able to use it, but also to develop and protect it. And we know clearly if we do not do this, then God's wonderful creation will disappear. Graham Tomlin in his book, The Widening Circle, says it's not just a Christian vocation to care for creation, but a deeply human one. Now we all know we don't always do this. We often put ourselves above the needs of creation and the vocation to nurture creation. If we think about the story of, in Genesis of the temptation in the Garden of Eden, we see Adam and Eve hearing God's word but choosing not to follow it. They ate from the tree of knowledge, something that God particularly forbade them to do. They were thinking of themselves as more important than God. God had provided them with this wonderful place to live, the Garden of Eden, but they chose to forget that and just do what they wanted. I wonder if ever we do something similar. We have a wonderful God world that God has given us to live in. But sometimes I think we forget that the world needs protecting and nurturing and take an easier way out. Now, we am sure we know being Christian is not always easy. There are different ways of looking at this. Many years ago, my ex-husband and I ran a dairy farm in mid Wales. We farmed organically. We tried as much as we could to develop and protect our land. We didn't use any artificial fertilizers and we fed our cows on feed that did not have additives. That was incredibly difficult to find. All these additives and fertilizers are used to improve the output of the land and the output of the animals and the welfare of the animals. And of course, to provide a better living for the farmer. It was not easy farming organically. It was definitely more expensive, but my ex-husband felt very strongly that it was the right way to farm. 
This was many years ago, and I think we were a bit ahead of our time. At the time, we were criticised by our neighbours for the way we farmed, and particularly our bank manager, who thought it was not financially viable. And it ended up being right. We are reminded particularly this week of how the world is changing, particularly the climate, as we listen to reports of the COP28 conference in Dubai. In particular, we hear how the human race has contributed to the changes by our misuse, previously understood, misunderstood of the Earth's resources. Of course, now this puts a big responsibility on us all, particularly us as Christians, to do whatever we can to protect our wonderful world. My sister-in-law, Jan, is a freelance environmental consultant, works a lot for the EEC and across the world, and would normally be at this conference. She's not there this year because she hasn't been able to go. But in recent conferences, she's spoken and led seminars. She feels very, very strongly that it is the responsibility of every single one of the human race, particularly the world leaders and developers, to work to help this situation not get worse. She recently gave a local presentation in a group where she lives, explaining what the problems were and stressed how important it is for each one of us to do what we can to help. I think we tend to forget sometimes that we have just as much a responsibility as the leaders. And I think it's especially important for us as Christians to think seriously what we should do to protect God's wonderful creation. I mentioned earlier today that it's Advent Sunday, the start of a new Christian year. In January, we sometimes make New Year's resolutions, but I'd like to suggest that this year we make an Advent resolution to put God's creation at the centre of what we do. Maybe we should think again about what we can do to protect all that God has created and in our individual action limit the effect of change. We might think that what we do won't make much difference. I know there are times when I don't always do the right thing. Maybe because I don't have time, or I can't be bothered, or does my effort really make a difference? But let's make it our Advent resolution to try and think again. When we're wrapping Christmas presents, should we use shiny paper because it looks prettier, but it can't be recycled? Could we just check what can be recycled? Now it's gone so cold, we just put more layers on rather than turn the heating up. And I'm sure we've all done that this week. I'm sure we can all think of lots of little things that we do, and if we all do a little bit, it will make a difference. Let's remember that the reading with her this morning told us that God made human beings a little lower than God. God did give us dominion over the works of his hands, but he did intend us to look after, develop and protect his creation. So let us ask God to help us to do the right thing, to look after his world. In our next hymn, we'll be singing, Oh God, You Search Me. It's a beautiful hymn with lovely words and describes how God is aware of all we do, how he's always with us, and he's aware of our thoughts and actions. So let's make sure we put God's priorities right. Please stand if you're able to sing, Oh God, You Search Me.
please sit or kneel for our prayers of intercession. Everlasting God, as we come before you at the start of the season of Advent, we ask you to prepare us for the coming of your Son, Jesus Christ, and to hear us when we pray in faith for the needs of the Church and the world, and to thank you for your goodness. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Mighty God, we pray for your Church today, gathered worldwide in churches, chapels and cathedrals and homes, to praise you and to hear your holy word. Give us a sense of expectation as we come and inspiration as we go. We pray for your blessing on all those who lead, preach and teach. And we pray especially for our own ministry team as they seek to do your will and guide us through our spiritual and worldly journey through Advent until the day when we celebrate together through the birth of your Son on Christmas Day. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Creator God, drive away despair from our politics. Revive our dreams of justice and truth and restore our passion for what is good and right. Establish your just and gentle rule throughout the world, especially where it is conflict, where peace seems so far away, and so many have lost everything, even the faint hope of a peaceful future. Govern the hearts and minds of all world leaders and those in authority, that they may act justly, honestly, and according to your will. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father God, we pray for those amongst our families, friends and neighbours who will only see in Advent a hectic and worrying run-up to the excesses of a secular Christmas. Help us as we try to set an example of a true spirit of preparation for that incredibly precious gift of the Christ child. May they see in our services the true meaning of Christmas and experience your love for them through the giving of your Son, Jesus Christ. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful God, we pray for those for whom this day will be long and painful. For those in hospital or ill at home. Those struggling with despair or depression. And for all who care for them. Comfort and heal all who suffer. Give them courage and hope in their troubles. And bring them the joy of your salvation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving God, we pray for those who have recently died and for those for whom this day will be their last. Be near to all who mourn and comfort them with the knowledge that in the coming of your Son, Jesus, the gates of heaven will be opened wide for all who accept him as Lord and Saviour. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Advent, Lord, as we leave this place today, draw near to us, strengthen our faith, deepen our love for you and for our neighbours and open our eyes to the wonder of your creation, so that when our Saviour comes, 
he may find our hearts ready to receive him. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Please stand as we declare our faith in the words of the Creed. Though he was divine, he did not cling to equality with God, but made himself nothing, taking the form of a slave. He was born in human likeness. He humbled himself and was obedient to death, even the death of the cross. Therefore God has raised him on high and given him the name above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow and every voice proclaim that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Amen. May the God of peace make you completely holy, ready for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let's share a sign of his peace. Peace. Please be seated. And can I just begin by reminding us all as we gather around this blessed table that there are those who are finding life very difficult, not just here at home, but uh, all over the world. Um, I've had a message this morning from the rural dean in Penkridge to say that the Hatherton Hotel has burnt down overnight. And so the refugees that were finding shelter there have now been moved to Manchester. So they've lost all of their belongings and now they've lost their connectedness with the community there. So please can we just have a short time of silence as we pray to God that he may help them and all in trouble today to find peace. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to praise you, Father, Lord of all creation. In your love you made us for yourself. When we turned away you did not reject us, but came to meet us in your Son. You embraced us as your children and welcomed us to sit and eat with you. In Christ you shared our life that we might live in him and he in us. He opened his arms of love upon the cross and made for all the perfect sacrifice of sin. On the night he was betrayed, at supper with his friends, he took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Father, we do this in remembrance of him. His body is the bread of life. At the end of supper, taking the cup of wine, he gave you thanks and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you.
for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Father, we do this in remembrance of him. His blood is shed for all. As we proclaim his death and celebrate his rising in glory, send your Holy Spirit that this bread and this wine may be to us the body and blood of your dear Son. As we eat and drink these holy gifts, make us one in Christ our risen. With your whole church throughout the world, we offer you this sacrifice of praise and lift our voice to join the eternal song of heaven. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours. <coughs> we break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. So for those joining us at home, this is your opportunity to gather bread and wine together, or fruit juice, and in unity with those of us in the church, to join in this most wonderful, blessed meal of communion. For those of you in our church, Annie will now uh, direct us an aisle at a time. If you wish to receive communion, can I ask you to place your hands out firmly in front of you? If you wish to receive the, the bread only, can I ask you to place your hand out? And this is the Lord's table, and everyone is welcome here. So please come forward to receive a blessing from God. So come for all things are now prepared. body of Christ keep you in eternal life the body of Christ keep you in eternal life
we say together. Lord, we have shared your bread and received your life. By the power of your spirit, keep us always in your love. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. So we have a, a number of notices. As you can imagine, it's getting a little bit crazy with Christmas coming ever closer. But just to let people know, Christmas-wise, we've got our Christmas cards for sale at the back. Please feel welcome to uh, buy them. I think they're 50p each. We've also had some simple little flyers printed this year just to indicate all of the services that we have here and at St Peter's over this wonderful festive season. Information there about our reverse advent calendar and the dates and times for that. I believe I'm going to need some help, however, on the 16th, bringing stuff in as um, Alison's having a life. <laughs> Oh no, I believe her husband's taking her away for an anniversary. Stephen, listen to this woman. <laughs> no pressure whatsoever. Um, we've got just a few of these Follow the Star Advent calendars for our children. Now, we have only got a few, uh, but if you're interested, they're brilliant Advent calendars. They have Stickers on for every day, we had a sticker, and every sticker is part of a story, the Christmas story. So if you're interested, then please, uh, they'll, be at the, uh, they'll be at the back, and we're asking people if they can to make a donation, which you, if you can put it in the uh, brown wooden box would be really useful, or of course, if not, onto our uh, card machine at, at the back of church. I think it, they're costing us about three pounds something each, aren't they, Roger? So if we can cover the cost, that would be that would be great. Thank you. Um, and other information uh, due to the the cold weather um, and the way that things have gone, we're going to be postponing our Bible study on Monday evening. It was a little cold here, wasn't it, on Monday? The heating had broken down, but we got it fixed. So that's wonderful. Also, information here about Neville's funeral, which is taking place on Wednesday the 6th. The, the funeral that is going to start at Bushby Crematorium at 11.15, and then we're moving to St Nicholas at 12.30 for a service of thanksgiving. And the family have asked if we could offer to serve like refreshments, tea and coffee, and just make people feel at home. Some of them are going to be travelling quite a way to be with us. Um, the reverse advent calendar I've spoken about. Um, inquiries on Monday as well, because of the weather and things have gone, we've decided to um, not have um, our inquiries on Monday evening. That means that the next inquiries will be the 8th of January for those. Uh, Happy New Year. <laughs> um, and the rest of the information, the go-to place on Wednesday morning, the coffee, cake and chat on Monday. Will that still be? Tomorrow. Free. Nice cakes and everything. At the parish rooms, so you're very welcome to join us. Tea, coffee and, um, and lovely cake. Um, go-to place, food bank. All the rest is, on, is literally on our new sheet. There's so much which is wonderful, but also it means we're very, very busy. So let's stand and sing our final hymn, uh, during which the collection will be taken. And for those big children and little children, you're welcome to uh, take an instrument to play. And it's come on and celebrate. So let's stand.
we are looking for God in our world. May we see what God wants us to see. We are looking for God in our lives. May we be who God wants us to be. And may God, our shepherd, protector, awakener and Holy Spirit, bless us through these Advent days. And may the blessing of God, the Father, Son and Holy Spirit, be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.